Ah, another hard day of work for me, Mr. Pendulum, the number one fan of the Pendulum strategy on YouTube.com. <laughs> but my work is rewarding. As I always say, Pendulum is the best of all the decks. I wonder if my lovely wife has cooked me a meal. Let's go check. <laughs> That's odd. I can smell something, but it doesn't smell exactly like food. Uh, my beautiful wife, Konami, uh, what are you making? Ah, Mr. Pendulum. I'm afraid I do have something for you, but it's not food. It's anti-spell fragrance. Ha! No. I'm ruined! If only I had made my own food. Using some sort of meal prep... Roll the ass! But first, this video is sponsored by Factor. I'm a busy guy. I stream three times a week. I publish a video every time Dyer sends me one. I practice for YCSs, I practice for Edison events, I don't do well at any of them. And I take care of a very needy dog. And that leaves me with very little time to cook. That's where Factor comes in. Their meals require no prep and no mess, cutting out stressful meal planning for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and saving you lots of time you can now spend on yourself. Though on this channel I maintain an anti-gamer position, Factor is perfect for gamers. They've got no-hassle prepared foods that make sure you always have something nutritious on hand when you don't have time to think about making lunch or dinner, instead of just eating an entire sleeve of Oreos. Personally, I like cooking with my wife, and Factor has helped turn making dinner from a headache into a lightning-fast activity. Now we can spend time doing what we want together instead of trying to eat all the things that are about to rot in the fridge. And if you're worried about dietary needs, don't be. With meal preference options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and vegetarian, and more than 27 other options every week, even the pickiest eaters will be satisfied. Meal plans range from 4 to 18 meals per week, and you can add more or reduce based on your preference. You can also easily modify food preferences at a moment's notice, or even skip a week if you're away and don't need meals. Click the link below and use my code POGMBTSEP50 for 50% off your first box. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. New format, new pack, new decks, it's time for the Age of Overlord. And don't worry, I know what you little gluttons want for your first foray into the new format. Slop. 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 Slop! Presenting Pendulum. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the list, which started as an Exordio joint. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. With that, let's peek at Pendulum. For many duelists, Pendulum represents everything wrong with this godforsaken game. Each card is a novel in and of itself, each effect has a billion different interactions with other cards, effects, and abilities, and the resultant strategy mostly just plays with itself until it assembles an end board with so many negates no deck alive could possibly hope to chew through it. What's more, when playing against Pendulum, games are just as boring. As Konami's left like eight different cards that automatically win the game on the spot legal, uh, dimensional barrier, anti-spell, and more functionally, prevent the Pendulum player from getting anywhere near repeating their favorite YouTube catchphrase. Until now! Zark's a very interesting direction for the deck. Sure, it's still a huge hassle in terms of explaining to Yugi Boomers, but it permits us to weave through combos, play diverse points of interaction instead of just Appalosa and Baron, and even throw in some non-engine. Yes, Pendulum looks as if it's finally being brought into the 21st century with these new tools, and playing them unlocks a whole slew of old tools the deck had available that had been pushed out by a half decade of magician-based thinking. Is it still a silly combo deck? Well, yes, but at least it's playable. With that, let's get into the card by card. First, we'll begin with some odd eyes. Three copies of Revolution Dragon. The important part here is you can send this from your hand to the graveyard and pay 500 life points to add a level 8 or lower Dragon Pendulum monster from your deck to your hand. We're playing one copy of Odd Eyes Arc Pendulum Dragon, which is a vanilla, and if an Odd Eyes card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon an Odd Eyes monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Next up is a newbie. Three copies of Supreme King Gate Magician. Uh, as a Pendulum effect, Supreme King's Arc you control can't be banished by your opponent's card effects, and during your main phase, you can destroy this card, and if you do put a Supreme King Gate Pendulum, monster from your hand or deck into your pendulum zone except him. That's a hard one, so it is a monster. If you have a Supreme King Gate other than Gate Magician in your pendulum zone, you can send a Pendulum Dragon, Disease Dragon, Synchro Dragon, or Fusion Dragon monster from your hand or extra deck to the graveyard to special summon this card from your hand. If it's special summoned, you can add a card that mentions Zark from your deck to your hand, except for a Spellcaster monster. Two copies of Supreme King Dragon, Lightworm, get it, 
which in the Pendulum Zone, if a monster is special summoned and you control Zark and another Pendulum monster can be special summoned, then you can choose a Pendulum monster you control in the attribute and level of that monster, and this card become the level of the other. If it's a monster effect, if it's a normal or special summoned, you could add a face-up Supreme King Dragon or Supreme King Gate Pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand, then Synchro or Xyz summon a Supreme King Dragon monster. If a face-up Pendulum monster you control is destroyed by a battle or card effect while it's face-up in your extra deck, you can add it back to your grip. After that, we've got three copies of Dark Worm, one copy of Gate Zero, one copy of Astrograph Sorcerer, Triple Perform Pal Skullcrabat Joker, Double Harmonizing Magician, and a Purple Poison. For spells, we're on three Dragon Shrine, three the Light Winged Dragon, which during the main phase allows you to add a Supreme King Dragon or a Supreme King Gate Pendulum Monster from your deck to your hand, or if you control Supreme King Zark, special summon them instead. One copy of Pendulum Evolution, a continuous spell that allows you to shuffle a Pendulum Monster with your hand back into the deck, add a Pendulum Monster with 2500 attack and a different name from your deck to your hand, and during your main phase, if you special summon a face down Pendulum Monster from your extra deck this turn, you can Pendulum Summon a monster. You can target one Supreme King Zark you control, it can attack all your opponent's monsters once each this turn. Turn. And finally, the icing on the cake. Soul of the Supreme Celestial King. Tribute is Spellcaster Pendulum Monster with 2500 original attack. Fusion summon a Zark from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand. Deck. Extra deck field and or graveyard, but its effects are negated unless at least one of your Pendulum Dragon, Xyz Dragon, Secret Dragon, Diffusion Dragon monsters are currently banished. For non-engine, we're on three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Thrust, one Triple Tactics, Talents, Double Book of Eclipse, and Triple Imperm in the extra. We've got Supreme Celestial King, Odd Eyes, Arc Ray Dragon. As a Pendulum effect, if you have two cards in your zone, you can special this card, then you can shuffle card from your Pendulum zone into the deck. Then if return to the extra deck, you can special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. And as a monster, it is made with four different dragon monsters of each super type. It's treated as Zark, and the face down card in the extra deck must be fusion summoned or special summoned by tributing a level 12 dark Zark. If it's special summoned from the extra, you can put a pendulum monster from your deck into the pendulum zone, and if this card in the monster zone is destroyed, you can place it in the pendulum zone. We're playing normal Zark, Starving Venom, Predaplower, Fusion Dragon, Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, Baron de Fleur, Borload Savage Dragon, Crystal Wing Synchro, Supreme King Dragon, Clear Wing, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, Odd Eyes Rebellion, Xyz Dragon, Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, Apollosa, Exceed the Pendulum, which can be made with two effect monsters, including a pendulum, Gains 100 for each Pendulum Monster card you control, and if this card is Link Summoned, can add a face of Pendulum Monster from your extra deck to your hand during the main phase. You can Special Summon from your hand or graveyard in defense position one Pendulum Monster with a level between the scales of the two cards in your zones. Following up the extra deck lineup, we've got a Selene and a Beyond the Pendulum in the side. We've got two Druus Worms and a Magnema, three copies of Droll and Lockbird, and Abyss Dweller, a Change of Heart, Double Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, and a Herald of the Abyss for the Thrust Board and Three Dimensional Barrier. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Rescue Ace, and our opponent hasn't drawn anything but an impulse. I'm feeling pretty good. We're going to begin with a copy of Dragon Shrine that's going to send, of course, the Odd Eyes to the graveyard, followed by a Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. We're going to activate the effect, which is going to walk into the impulse. Our opponent's going to go for a Hydrant, and why do people do this? Just go get Fire Engine. We'll go for a Gate Magician here. We'll activate the effect of the Gate Magician in order to cycle into a Gate Zero, then a Gate Magician in hand, in order to summon itself, sending that Clear Wing to the graveyard and grabbing the trap. We're going to be on the Pendulum. That's going to grab us a Light Worm. Afterwards, we're going to go ahead and scale that bad boy. That's a zero and an eight, so let's perform a Pendulum summon we'll summon two copies of gate magician and one supreme king dragon dark worm let's make an absolute dragon into a selenar we'll activate the effect of the selenar and the effect of the absolute dragon go into vortex and then we'll go ahead and get rid of three tokens there so we can summon back the gate magician make an apollosa set two and pass a pretty normal open our opponent's going to lead with the book of moon targeting the vortex okay afterwards they're going to go for a sinful spoils i guess this is probably worth an ash next they're going to go for the effect of the hydrant while the apollosa is still on field so we can just go ahead and negate it after that they're going to normal summon a jet synchron and make a link rebo into sp little knight this is is going to chase out not only the second activation of Apollosa, but also the Imperm. SP Little Knight, what an incredibly powerful card. It's really going to improve the power of a lot of these low-to-the-ground decks like Rescue Ace. They're going to go for Turbulence afterwards, and unfortunately it is going to resolve. They only set two here afterwards. They're going to go ahead and go to the battle phase, at which point we will activate Soul of the Supreme Celestial King and go for the effect of Zark. They will chain Emergency in order to cycle Preventer, but we are still going to be able to eat the entire board. They do bring back this copy of Impulse, which trades for the Apollosa, and then in main phase two they can negate the effect to this arc or <laughs> I guess try to. Uh, they're going to go ahead and use the Emergency in Graveyard to reset the Extinguish. Uh, we're going to flip up this copy of Vortex Dragon. That'll eat the Extinguish, and we should be fine from here. We'll go for Revolution Dragon. That's going to grab from deck to hand a copy of Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. Let's perform a Pendulum Summon that card and the Gate Magician. Gate Magician and Dark Worm and CL3 Light Worm. Choking off access to that Impulse. We're going to go ahead and grab a Gate Magician. We'll give them a nice Impulse a little bit later. Let's go for Light Worm here. That'll allow them to go into a copy of Preventer, but we're not scared. It's just body blocking from here on out. We're going to Special Summon our light worm from graveyard to go into a savage dragon activate its effect in order to equip the apollosa go for the gate magician in hand and then proceed to combat when our opponent tries to float we will negate it with savage dragon and get in for well 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 over lethal woof this is a beefy deck
Our second match is up against, ooh, Resonator Labyrinth. Color me intrigued, or red, I suppose. This game showcases both what this deck can do going second, but also the importance of playing non-engine within it. Our opponent's going through the motions here, going for Lovely Labyrinth and Cucklock. They're going to go ahead and activate Chandra Liger in order to set a big welcome. They'll activate the big welcome, and guess what? We have an Ash Blossom in hand, just waiting for the opportunity to negate something like that. Afterwards, our opponent's going to reveal it was a bait. I have a Vision Resonator, and it's now time for you to sit through a Red Rising Dragon combo, okay? That's going to go ahead and grab them. What is this? A Crimson Gaia, activating its effect to grab a Red Zone. And then afterwards, they're going to go ahead and summon a Scar red dragon archfiend um anyway nice deck we're gonna go for a revolution dragon then at point of resolution we could fire book of eclipse uh turning the whole board face down and uh, allowing us to continue unimpeded we'll go for a supreme king dragon dark worm into a supreme king gate magician that's going to cycle for a gate zero we can use astrograph here to get another copy of the gate magician then we can activate the hand effect sending this copy of clear wing to the graveyard and activating its effect to grab a light worm we'll scale that light worm and then we'll overlay for an absolute dragon going into a beyond the pendulum before we have performed the pendulum summon getting ourselves a copy of vortex dragon we will grab a harmonizing and pendulum summon one two three and that's it because of course we have the harmonizing activation to worry about we're going to go ahead and activate that effect to grab a purple poison and we're going to also destroy a couple of our opponent's cards that's going to trigger their effects they're going to go into red dragon archfiend and scar red which of course allows us to activate thrust uh anyway we're geki that board let's go for the exceed the pendulum and this should just be a hop skip and a jump to lethal we'll grab an astrograph we'll go ahead and take their monster after making an exes that i just have in here for the trap and they'll consider so it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Dragon Link, and this is post-nerf, so you just know they're doing something spicy. They're going to begin with a copy of Black Metal Dragon into a Striker Dragon. They'll activate the Striker Dragon and the Black Metal Dragon to grab a Boot Sector Launch and a DMD. That DMD is coming down. It's going to bring from the graveyard back this Black Metal Dragon. He'll trigger that and a Romulus in sequence that'll grab from deck to hand a Dragon's Ravine and... Ooh, the new red eyes, huh? We'll go White Dragon Wyvern Burster into Pisty. We're going to summon out this copy of the Meteor Dragon. And then we'll go Black Dragon Collapse Serpent into Triple Burst, into Pisty, into DMD. We'll go into Heavenly Spheres and Saranir here. And what do you know? Saranir is a six, so we can go a tomb. This is all right. We'll use a tomb to get Magnemut. Then we'll trigger Magnemut and Saranir in sequence. We'll send a copy of Lubellion. Lubellion will cycle for the DMD. That's going to set a copy of Branded Beast. We'll go for this Dragon Ravine, pitching a card in order to send an Absa Router. They'll activate the Absa Router for a Tracer, and then we'll summon two cards from our hand with Boot Sector Launch. Why not? After that, we're going to go into a Baron de Fleur, activate Tracer, targeting the Boot Sector Launch in order to grab a Recharger, and end on a Borload Savage Dragon, equipped with a copy of Triple Burst and an IP Mascarena. Afterwards, we're going to go for a Chaos Space, drawing an Abiru! That's pretty good, and a Safer for next turn. Well, we are boned, but let's play it out anyway. We're going to go for Revolution Dragon here, and then we'll normal summon a copy of Dark Worm. We'll activate the effect in order to grab a Supreme King Gate Magician, which eats a Baron activation. No big deal. We can set scales once again and Pendulum Summon one, two, three. I don't really know what we intend to do with them, but we'll see. We'll go for the Regeki here. That'll chase out the Savage, but we still can't beat the Nibiru or the IP Mascarena or the impending Hieratic Seals. So let's just go next. So it's time for game two, and oh, two thrusts versus two stones. This is going to be a weird one. We're going to begin with a copy of Supreme King Gate Magician in the scale. We're going to activate the effect in order to go into Gate Zero, and then trigger the effect of the Astrograph Sorcerer in hand in order to get back another copy of Gate Magician. We'll activate the effect, sending that clear wing to the graveyard, and then afterwards we're going to grab the trap, go to Beyond the Pendulum, and trigger its effect in order to scale a copy of Lightworm. We're going to go ahead and perform a Pendulum Summon here of one, two, enough, into Nibiru. We'll go Harmonizing Magician. Our opponent's going to Nibiru, and I think I probably would have waited for it to resolve we do get to our side of the field another copy of supreme king gate magician we can thrust for a copy of talents and we can talents to take away that safer that's a nice one we'll set one and pass back to our opponent they draw for turn and that's not fantastic they're going to begin with a copy of lubellion for magnamot magnamot here is going to banish from graveyard a copy of beyond the pendulum and trigger the effect on field from here they're going to go into lubellion at which point we will go for zark we will trigger the effect of the zark they will droplet in response sending a cyframe driver which allows them to actually resolve the Lubellion for a branded beast in main two they're gonna make little knight and wow i am unprepared for just what this is going to do to the metagame we'll draw for turn uh we're gonna go for a bunch of pendulum monsters unsurprisingly here a supreme king gate magician and a light worm we're gonna light worm for the magician and we'll go ahead and grab this copy of the light wing dragon as well we're gonna grab a copy of dark worm we are going to synchro summon a supreme king dragon clear wing opponent will chain the effect of the 
ESP Little Knight in order to take the token off her side of the field. And we'll tasking for, right, yeah, they don't have any monsters on their side of the field yet. Uh, they do get to go for Druis Worm, which prevents us from actually connecting in any sort of meaningful way. And they eat our monster in the EMZ. Uh, so this is just going to have to work. They draw for turn. We have follow up and they don't. So they will set an evenly matched and pass back to us. Uh, let's just perform a pendulum summon while we can, summoning a purple poison and an astrograph and a Supreme King Gate Magician and going to the battle phase, at which point our opponent will concede. So it's time for that all imported game three and uh oh, we've drawn that one little card that no Dragon Link player ever wants to walk into. They're going to begin with a copy of Star Liege Safer to activate the effect in order to add a card from deck to hand. It's drolling time. They're just going to set one and pass. We'll draw for turn. Should be able to clean this up. We'll go for a Dragon Shrine here, sending a Dark Worm. We'll activate Dark Worm's effect, summoning itself, then activating its effect on field into an infip. No big deal. No big deal. We can go ahead and activate the effect of the Revolution Dragon in hand, to which our opponent will chain Sauronir. That's, I guess, a little frustrating, but we do still get Light Worm. We're going to set gate zero. We are going to activate Supreme King Gate Magician, summoning itself, and then we can activate its effect in order to grab the trap. We'll go beyond the pendulum, and guess what? We already have the Light Worm in hand, so we can grab a Harmonizing. Let's scale that Light Worm, zero and eight. Pendulum summon out one, two, three monsters before activating Harmonizing and beyond the pendulum blowing up the board in order to grab another seven from deck. From here, our opponent just scoops them up. So we're back with the deck, and sure, the non-engine did a lot of heavy lifting in that best of three, but isn't that just Yu-Gi-Oh? Let's do the pros and cons. One, the new Supreme King Gate Magician. It's insane. It completes the deck by being a free special, a searcher for gate zero, and also your way to search and activate Zark Board Wipe. Two, the deck puts up a fairly impressive board now. Full combo gives you a two mad apo, two omnis, a trap board wipe, and on the opponent's turn, a synchro summon that gives you another monster negate or a board wipe. And three, it can theoretically play low to the ground. Setting up King Gate Magician in the trap alongside non-engine is often enough to win a game if you get your combo stopped. And of course, you could theoretically play the Zark part as an engine in other Pendulum decks. Uh, here, we're showing a more pure variant, but theoretically, you could play a lot more engine to go heavy on the ground and build big, wide boards. And the cons. One, the deck doesn't have a one-card combo. Due to the nature of Pendulum, you kind of need to assemble scales and two monsters on the field to combo off. Various extenders and starters help this, but the lack of a one-card means the deck can sometimes have to sacrifice board presence to play. Two is going second. Boards in the current meta can easily remove your scales as you try to play, stopping you from pushing through multiple interrupts. Non-engine helps you push through, but well-established boards can be especially hard to crack. And three, it's still... Pendulum. It still loses to the same silly, unfun auto-win cards. It still lives or dies on scale math. Do you really want to do this for another year and change? That's a hypothetical. Don't answer that. I can hear you chanting from here. Overall, the Zark cards are a welcome addition to a struggling card type that just might give them the extra boost necessary to see minor play in the upcoming format. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shout out to all my patrons, but specifically, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Averant, Bacon for Hire, Brett Henry, Canor, Christian Malone, De Bears, Darkmaster Zork, Derp and Dragon, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, John Piet, Jordan Kuntz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. DeRezzo, MBT Play Madolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, and Your Socks Are Moist Again. Couldn't have done it without you. Also on that patron list should be Yuki. Yuki is a longtime supporter, and the software that I use to make that last scene is not very good, so I apologize that you weren't included. Everyone say thank you, Yuki, in the comments. Okay, 